welcome to another episode of I Demand a Homestead. My name is Amanda and today what we're going to be talking about is how we um, heat our house in a carbon neutral way, okay? Um, using two different things. We use the wood stove, which is behind us, as well as our newly installed air heat pump, okay? Now, um, the air heat pump is probably what we use for the bulk of our heat, but um, it's not as nice, doesn't make as nice a, a video to sit in front as the uh, wood stove. So that is why I'm sitting here to start talking to you about this. So if you saw some of our videos before on how we were going through our energy audit, because um, we had an old gas furnace, we then replaced it with an air heat pump. And our government here in Canada um, gives us a, a rebate um, for installing the air heat pump. Basically how um, an air heat pump uh, works is it uses electricity to move heat from one place to another. Um, so it's not using electricity to actually generate heat, it's just moving it. So that actually makes it a really efficient way to kind of heat your home versus like if you had just an electric heater. Um, so how it works, if I kind of put up this little diagram here, um, what happens is, and, and please forgive me, my understanding of the physics is probably not as awesome as, um, as some of you out there, um, but basically you have this liquid inside this tube that boils at a really, really low temperature. So you, even when it's cold outside, there's still actually energy and heat available in the air. Um, you know, it's, it's funny to think about, but it actually, it actually does still have heat in it, right? So that, that kind of solution goes out to the outdoor unit and it absorbs the heat from the air and since it boils at a very low temperature, that actually causes that, um, that liquid in the tube to then boil, then comes back into the house, it compresses it, which then causes it to release the heat, and then it kind of goes back through the process again and again. So it's actually really neat to think about. And then in the summertime, you can actually reverse the flow of it and it will cool your house for you. So that's kind of how the, um, the air heat pump works very similar to kind of how geothermal works, um, except for of course the ground, the geothermal is more, is more efficient because um, the ground doesn't freeze and it's always kind of a, a um, pretty standard temperature, but it's really expensive to install because then you've got to drill down um, and, and it just wasn't something that we were prepared to do. So that's kind of why we went with the air heat pump instead. So here is the um, exterior unit, the outside unit of our air heat pump. Really just looks like a big air conditioner. And that's kind of, kind of how it works actually, very similar to that. Um, and so this is really cool because again, as I said, it works as both kind of a way to heat your house in the winter time and then also as a way to cool it in the summertime. Here's the, um, inside unit that has the also the electrical furnace backup. I'm not going to go right inside because it gets actually too dark for me to film, but it looks just like a furnace. Let's see if we can actually see what it looks like. Go in there and it gets very dark. You can kind of see it. Just like any old furnace is what it looks like. Except for it's not. So as I said, the air outside does have um, heat and energy in it, even when it's cold. However, that being said, the efficiency does drop as the temperatures get lower, which, um, which is where our wood stove comes into play. So your heat pump will work really, really well for temperatures above zero degrees Celsius. But then as you get down into the minuses, it becomes less efficient, okay? Um, and then it, after kind of minus 10, minus 15, depending on what unit you have, it doesn't really work very well at all. So um, that's why whenever you put in a heat pump, you have to have a backup, um, or you should have a backup heat source. Um, so we like to diversify here so that that way we've got lots of different options. So in addition to our heat pump, we also have a, um, a, a electric furnace down there. 
but we really don't want to use that very much because that uses an awful lot of electricity. Um, and electricity um, here in Ontario, it's mostly hydroelectric, meaning that it's coming from like rivers and dams and things like that. There is some nuclear in there as well, which don't get me started on that. But anyway, it's relatively carbon, it's pretty clean. It's carbon neutral, I'm gonna say. Um, so, but we don't wanna use more energy than we need to. So that's why we try not to use that backup electric heat. So that's where the wood stove comes into play. Um, so what we tend to do is, now my husband and I, we work full time, so we're not here during the day. We don't like to have the wood stove running unattended. I just don't think that's a, that's a good idea for us. If you guys do that, that's cool. Um, I, I'm just not comfortable with it. So what we usually will do is, um, today is a weekend. So when we get up in the morning, we'll get the wood stove up and running because usually it's kind of pretty, pretty cold and we have the house temperature set pretty low. So we'll get the wood stove running un until we heat the house up and we get it kind of warmer than maybe it's a little bit comfortable. Um, and then we will we'll stop the fire um, and let it kind of die back. And then we'll, we'll kind of stoke it up again in the evening when the temperatures are gonna be dropping. Um, and then we'll, we'll load our stove for that overnight burn. So um, if you're interested in kind of seeing how we, we load this wood stove um, to do an overnight burn, um, please kind of, I have a video on that, please feel free to check it out. So I'm probably gonna get a few comments about how burning wood is, is not carbon neutral um, or environmentally friendly, but let me tell you how we do it. Um, it's always a bit of a, a judgment call on this, right? So we're pretty lucky in that we have about um, half an acre of woods behind our house. So that's where we get all of our wood from. And um, since we don't heat our house exclusively with wood, we don't need as much as if you were trying to do that, right? So I think I've seen somewhere out there that if you actually want to heat a three bedroom house with exclusively with wood, you need like six tons of wood. But we definitely don't kind of do that. So at this point, we're just taking down the trees that are dead um, in our half acre of woods. And that's what we use to heat our house with. So there's no transportation costs. Um, there's, there's nothing like that. So for every kind of um, log that we burn, we've got lots more trees that are growing, young trees, turning into old trees. And so it's kind of like a, a cycl uh, cyclical process, right? So um, that's kind of where the tree will sequester the carbon. Then we will kind of burn the wood. And this is, a, this is an EPA certified stove. So it, um, it is really, really efficient and it really doesn't release a lot of kind of particles. And so that's why we're kind of comfortable with this. That's, that's where we've made that choice. The other thing we're kind of hoping to be able to do at some point down the road is to switch over to solar um, so that that way we'll be completely kind of off the grid. But it, that's really expensive and we just are not there yet. Um, so, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, suggestions for us about how we can improve the, um, the energy efficiency of our heating, um, uh, we'd love to kind of chat a little bit more about that. Um, if you have any other comments, please feel free to post them in the comment section. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and then we can always kind of chat about how we're, we're moving forward to try and become more sustainable. So everybody, until the next time, have a great day and uh, take care. Bye-bye.